up on 21st century. In South Africa, dreams are coming true after decades of apartheid. Young people perform on the very stage that once bands them. Times are changing. It's just a matter of keeping on believing in him. Yes. Because yes. this is talent. Yes. And I'm telling you, yes. a superstar in me. An extraordinary opportunity for the youth of South Africa. When I'm singing, I feel different, like a new me. Hello and welcome to 21st Century. I'm Daljit Naliwa. South Africa, a country of great beauty and culture. But for more than four decades, black and non-white South Africans lived under a brutal system of segregation, apartheid. Denied the right to vote and banned from most public places and universities, many could never realize their true potential until the end of apartheid brought new hope. Now, a talented group of young people are living their dreams and taking their place on some of the world's biggest stages. Join us on their unforgettable journey. The townships of South Africa, their sprawling communities, built on the periphery of most major cities, housing some 10 million of the country's 45 million non-white population. Galashera Township, in the northern part of the country, confronts the same challenges facing many black communities in South Africa. Crime, limited access to good health care, and an unemployment rate as high as 70%. 26-year-old Tesele Kamone was raised here with five siblings in a tight-knit religious family. I grew up in difficulty. I grew up in poverty. There was a time where my mom and dad both didn't work, but they tried to make sure that there's something on the table for us to eat. And when Tesele and his siblings were young, the family had an even bigger struggle to contend with. Apartheid. This system of segregation, brutally enforced by the state, was official government policy for more than four decades. Black residents were denied the right to vote in national elections, were banned from many public facilities, and were required to carry a pass at all times or face arrest. There were police that were going house to house asking pass. And if you don't have it, it was uh, imprisonment. Simeon Kamone is Tesele's father. The South African army was tough and was against anybody. When the children were playing there, they were beaten up. They couldn't attend any white university. It was really difficult to have children under those circumstances. Apartheid officially ended in 1994, when blacks were allowed to vote in UN-monitored elections. Anti-apartheid leader Nelson Mandela was elected president ushering in a new era for South Africa. The time for the healing of the wounds has come. Finally, Simeon Kamone could envision a new world of opportunity for his children. I was really hoping that they must be highly educated. That is why I always tell all my children that since we are on new environment, please, Devote yourself to studies and for better life. Mr. Kamone, who worked as a messenger before being laid off, and Mrs. Kamone, a receptionist, were eager for Tesele to attend university and get a full time job, a job with financial security. I wanted him to join police force or to be a teacher. I wanted something professional that he will ask for a job 
and be employed and say, my son is employed. And sit in the office. And sit in the office, yes, with a tie like myself. But Tesele dreamt of a very different future for himself. He dreamt of becoming a professional opera singer, an aspiration shared by an increasing number of young people from South Africa's black townships. Some learned opera in competitive community choirs. Others, like Linda Netaleza, first heard it on television advertisements. At that time, I didn't know what genre it was, what was that, because we were used to um, this music that we normally listen at home. So when that played, I was like, okay, that sounds beautiful. It felt like something silky, or I don't know how to describe it, but at that moment, I felt um, that I love, I love this music. But under apartheid, a career in opera would have been almost unthinkable for a black South African. The country's most prestigious opera hall, located in Cape Town, once banned black and racially mixed performers and even prohibited non-whites from attending as audience members. And when it came to studying opera, non-whites were barred from the finest training ground for classical musicians, the University of Cape Town South African College of Music, unless they got a special exception from the government. Angelo Gabato is a former director of the opera program at the sure University of Cape Town, UCT. Before. Any black student that wanted to register at UCT had to obtain a permit. They could apply to study at UCT, but then UCT had to go through all the hoops of applying for particular permits. The opera school has changed very radically in the period of the political change in South Africa. That change has opened the door for the country's most talented black students to study opera at UCT. Despite his parents' concerns about music as a career, Tesele applied to the program and, to his amazement, was accepted with a full scholarship. It felt exciting that I know that I'll be in a university. With us, our culture is like a big thing if you go to university. Linda, the young singer whose love of opera was sparked by a television ad, is from the township called Kayalitja, home to more than half a million people on the outskirts of Cape Town. While her family's house has electricity and running water, many of the township's residents have neither. And according to the United Nations World Health Organization, Kayalitja has the highest and fastest growing rate of tuberculosis infection in the world. Linda is the first generation of her family to apply to any college, let alone the prestigious University of Cape Town. And like Tesele, Linda was amazed when she too was accepted and granted a scholarship. When I heard um, that the UCT College of Music took me, I was screaming my lungs out. <laughs> Kamal Khan is the current director of the school, an American of Indian descent who served as assistant conductor at the Metropolitan Opera in New York and has conducted and taught across the United States, Asia and Europe. There was no doubt that I wanted this job because I didn't think that I would ever find this caliber of operatic talent anywhere else in this quantity again. This country, the people making the music, the vocal music, really are a cross-section of the people living here. Today, about two-thirds of the university's opera students are black or mixed race. But Khan 
quickly learned that the challenges facing students here can be far greater than what his singers face elsewhere in the world. Many deal with serious financial struggles and some, like Linda, have had major health problems. Two years ago, Linda was very sick. She, like many in her township, was stricken with tuberculosis. She didn't miss lectures for too long of a period. She did the treatment and recovered quite well. But I always keep an eye out for her health. I was diagnosed with um, TB and then I told him. He was so, so, so supportive. Every day he was checking up on me. How are you? How is it? How are you taking meds? Are you eating enough? After receiving medical treatment, Linda has recovered and thrived, winning the university's top opera prize in 2011. Yes. When I'm singing, I feel different, like a new me. When you put me on stage or you give me an aria to sing, then I can turn into a different Linda than the one you see now. For Tisele, he sees opera not only as a passion, but also as a path to new opportunities. I know more people now and people help me in ways that I never thought that people could help me before. Tesele had two life-changing experiences that he says showed him just how far he's traveled from his township. He was accepted, along with Linda and three other UCT students, to apprentice at the prestigious Glimmerglass Opera Company in upstate New York. And he was asked to sing at the United Nations General Assembly, a venue he'd never dreamed of performing at, at a ceremony honoring a man who represents everything Tesele's father had hoped for, Nelson Mandela. Today's celebration of President Mandela's 94th birthday takes place in New York, where Mandela was granted the honor of the freedom of the city. Under the assembly soaring ceiling, Tesele made his way to the stage. I felt it was an auspicious occasion. Did you see my posture when I walked there? <laughs> That's a very decent, elegant posture. <laughs> When I walked in here, I saw a picture of Nelson Mandela. I almost had tears on my eyes because I reflected back to the opportunities that we didn't have before. Piano, piano. Terra, terra. Sotto voce. Sibilanda. And the opportunities that we have now and what we are trying to show the world that we can do. It was just an unbelievable moment for me. Unbelievable. Tesele isn't the only UCT-trained South African singing opera on a world stage. Recent UCT graduates include Musa Nogongwana, now studying at the prestigious Academy of Vocal Arts. 
Sonny Boy Gladlow, who sang two principal parts at the Zurich Opera House. And Pretty Yende, who scored a starring role at the Metropolitan Opera at just 27 years old. Tesele envisions himself on that stage one day too, with his parents seated proudly in the red velvet chairs. They had never seen him perform in an opera on any stage. I would like to see him. I would like to see him at the theater. Surely, surely, I would like to sit in front of him and listen properly. And the Kamanis finally got that chance during this filming. They were flown from their township in the north of the country to Cape Town to see Tassele perform in a university production of the classic French opera, Tales of Hoffman. I never dream of going to Cape Town, but children are taking us to the places of which we never, never expect we will be. One of those places is the music school where Tassele studies. He proudly gave them a tour of the facilities. All of my exercises, I do them here. Do you remember when you wanted me to buy you a piano, which I couldn't? When was that? Was I still young? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mama. Yes. So why don't you get the piano for me? Uh, I couldn't afford for it. <laughs> <laughs> now I believe I am in Cape Town because I've seen some that I never thought I'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the highlights of the Patrick visit Ticolo. was meeting Tesele's yeah, instructor, Patrick, Patrick Ticolo. Oh, yes. Not the only teacher, because yes. he's training their son, oh, but because they the never I expected I South Africa's like, leading yeah. university see, like would have older, black <laughs> faculty <laughs> members. He's a hard worker. I, he oh, care? is that so? Yeah, is yeah if you say so, then I'll believe no, because he, you are the teacher. You know, back in our communities, people, if you're saying you go to study music, they yeah. think, what are you going to do with that? We need you to go to work. We need money. We, we're starving here. Yes, yes. You know? That's what the question I also it, it, ask. It's that baby in us, that yeah. belief in us. I heard of Professor Ticolo reassured Mr. Yeah, so Kamone that Tesele's singing would give him the resources to, to help support to the family. Okay, because okay, that's good the, the, news. You know, say. Times are changing. It's just okay. a matter of keeping on believing in him. Yes. Because yes. this is talent. Yes. And I'm telling you, yes. a superstar in making. Is that so? <laughs> Having to sing at the United Nations. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah? yes. You know, that's one of the big offices. The biggest. <laughs> Hoffman would be performed in a major venue too, that Cape Town Opera Hall, which had once banned black and mixed-race audiences and performers. In the 1970s, after a contentious four-year battle, the stage had finally opened to South Africans of all races. It was really a very big deal, creating opportunities for South Africans of different races to find their way onto that stage. Good nice time. For Linda, the stage was now the site of a make or break performance. This is my first sort of big role. This could be my chance to show them what I have. The stakes were also high for Tesele. His parents were there to see him perform in an opera for the first time. They were unsure what to expect. I still dramatize myself with this opera. Uh, I'm someone who always, when I like a thing and I'm, I feel happy, I normally ululate. Ululating is a celebratory shouting that for many African women is the equivalent of a standing ovation. Mr. But Tassele was Maholo concerned the display might Maholo not be Pedro. entirely appropriate uh, at the opera. Can I ululate? Not when in an opera. Well, they take this one very seriously. So <laughs> I just want to see their reaction and I want to know what they have to say about what I'm doing. 
His parents make their way into the opera hall and slowly settle into their seats. Perform on stage, the Camones could not restrain their enthusiasm. <laughs> Mrs. Camone ululated with abandon, and Mr. Camone rose to his feet, shouting to his son. When I was cheering Tesili, it's a tribal praise. It means, oh, you are pleasing me, my son. I'm happy about it. I'm proud about it. A pride shared by all those involved in bringing this enormously talented group of singers of many races onto a stage that not so long ago would have banned most of them. It feels incredibly fulfilling. One almost wants to do a little victory dance. For Tisele, Linda and their colleagues, even more stunning accomplishments are now within their reach. I'll probably be in the United States, but I also want to be, I also want to go audition in places like London, and, you know, Europe. I want to work so that, I, so that my parents could be the children and I could be the parents. One day I'll be able to, to sing for you, to send the message of being a girl who grew up in the township and then made it to the Met in New York. One day it will come true. I know. And that's all for this edition of 21st Century, sharing the world stories. I'm Daljit Dhaliwal. We'll see you next time. Until then, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>